Nigeria's search for a solution to the challenge of non-availability and high cost of coronavirus diagnostic kits may have finally paid off with the development of RNA Swift Extraction Kit. The Director General of the National Biotechnology Development Agency, Alex Ankwa, said this on Thursday during a news briefing in Abuja. He said the RNA Swift Test Kit would not only revolutionize Africa's PCR-based COVID-19 testing, but will also expand the capacity about 50 times at least. He said it would equally reduce cost by over 500% as compared to the conventional kit in use. He noted that the diagnostic kit is very accurate and sensitive and competes favorably with conventional and commercially available kits for the diagnosis of COVID-19. Joining us now is uh, Professor Banji Oyeyinka. He is the currently he is currently the special advisor on industrialization to the president of the African Development Bank AFDB. It's a pleasure to have you on the news. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure to join you. What is your thoughts on these homemade kits? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, First of all, uh, let me thank you one more time for inviting me. It's a uh, the aspiration of any country uh, is to industrialize. Uh, the, one of the major principles of uh, the traditional uh, in the African Development Bank is to ensure that Africa develops its own capacity to manufacture. And this is one of the reasons why I joined him as the Senior Special Advisor on Industrialization. So we support fully every effort by African countries to uh, domesticate the manufacture of uh, uh, these test kits in Africa. Right now, we are following up in about four countries. Morocco has developed a test kit. In fact, they are set to manufacture about a million uh, test kits uh, very soon. Uh, it's being supported very strongly by the King of Morocco, who has also pledged to use the test kit to support 14 African countries. Uh, Senegal developed uh, a, a serology, which is based an anti antibody kit, uh, which we also are supporting. We've been following up with them. Uh, and currently, they are manufacturing a million kits uh, in the UK by a company called Molnoji. Uh, it was in the process of supporting this that we heard about the Nigerian West Africa kit. Uh, it was developed by a Nigerian based at US of Sheffield in the UK. And he had been working with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, uh, which had validated the kit uh, and uh, made an announcement that uh, this kit is just as good as any of the global uh, products. Uh, they, uh, they, there was uh, a press conference, as you said, two days ago uh, by, the, by, the couple, uh, by a couple of uh, ministers who, uh, who actually announced this test kit. Uh, okay. The name of the, the, the scientist is Dr. Alison Wakoji, who is based at the of Sheffield. So uh, we, we are fully in support of this testing. Uh, we are fully in support of all efforts by African countries to produce uh, an African innovation to respond to this crisis. Uh, there are some worries, of course, expectedly. There are those about the fact that these, because of profit, these relatively cheaper kids may not be approved for the mass market. Um, what are your concerns when it comes to this? And how do you think it can be tweaked so it can be available uh, to the mass market? Thank you. There are two ways to develop a product. You can use the commercial um, method, uh, putting profit first, uh, but you can also treat it as a public good, uh, which is, I believe, what Morocco, for example, is doing. Uh, the Kingdom of Morocco and the King is putting his way to right behind the kids. All innovations uh, face a market issue. We already have uh, market leaders who are already producing and making super normal profits. All of these companies are out of Africa. And I can tell you from our own research that in even when you have your money today, you are really right at the very end of the global supply chain. Nobody cares about Africa. The EU has currently just put a billion dollars to develop a vaccine. The United States has put about $1.4 billion to develop a vaccine by private actors. 
the government of the United States right now has bought up every single uh, uh, drug of this rem remdesivir, uh, which incidentally actually uh, is being led by Nigeria, one of the leaders of this particular product, which is supposed to cure COVID, remdesivir. It's led by the Nigerian called Dr. Baba Fode, uh, Baba Femi Kaiwo. Uh, he's based in the United States. So they bought up every single copy. It test, uh, that drug cost $3,200. So what the government of the U.S. has done, and which I want to propose, is that governments have to use a government procurement act to ensure production. This is what I believe Morocco is doing. You cannot leave it to market. If you leave it to market, it will not fly. So I want to advise, uh, like you asked me, that beyond the press conference, uh, beyond the announcement, government should take this further and make this a national initiative by actually saying, we are going to use this if you produce it. I am sure if government puts its weight and says, OK, go ahead and produce, we are ordering 2 million, 3 million over the next six months. Uh, this consortium developing this will find the, the financier. And this is my call on, on the federal government, state governments, and all actors who have the goodwill of this country uh, to, to do this. And I'm but sure once the, the innovation sir. hits the market, uh, because what we found is that it's cheaper than commercial kits, it's less environmentally polluting, and uh, it's, uh, the raw materials are easy to procure. All right, I, so I need to this, interject um, because yeah. of time. Um, I'll just uh, ask you just this last question to wrap things up. Um, are you worried about counterfeit uh, test kits being uh, in the market? And how can the government work to ensure that this is as minimal as possible? Yes, of course. Uh, anytime you have a crisis as we have now, of course, you're going to have people coming up with all kinds of things. So but thankfully, I think the NCDC has been quite strict. They were quite diligent uh, in this because this is about life and death. So I'm not uh, so worried. I think it's very difficult to replicate a kit like this. Uh, and I believe with the right institutional support, uh, we'll be able to... Uh, we're hearing, of course, people are already trying to do this, do their own testing and all that. Uh, but I believe that with the right sort of institutional uh, instrument, will be able to uh, to prevent uh, counterfeiting of this of this test kit. All right, Professor, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your time with us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks so much. It's our pleasure.